Hi everyone and thank you for watching this new video. Today we will discuss about optical design and aberration in optical system. However, I did not want to make just another boring theoretical video about aberration and I wanted to actually make something from stock parts that could be tested in the lab. So we'll illustrate the topic by building a 5x magnification microscopy objective. Look, this is an actual image taken with the microscope objective that we will build in this video. It is terrific, and the object is about 1 mm diameter only. Ok, but let's first start with the theory. We will then cover the assembly and testing of the objective. This is a conventional infinity corrected microscope setup. There is an object, a microscopy objective, and a tube lens. Light rays emerging from the object are then cooked by the objective and reimaged by the tube lens on the sensor plane. Here we will focus only on the microscope objective, so let's get a closer look into that. We see that the objective is composed of several lenses, including a negative doublet, two plano convex lenses, but also of an aperture. The question is, why do we need all these elements? Why can't we just use a single lens? And the answer is because of optical aberration. Let's first start with spherical aberration. Take a high power lens such as this one, and send some ray through it. We see that rays entering at the center of the lens does not intersect at the same point as a ray entering at the edge of the lens. This is due to spherical aberration, which originates in the too large angle that the last ray are making with the lens surface. The overall result of spherical aberration is that the image will be blurred because all the different rays have slightly different focus positions. There are two ways to limit spherical aberration. Either you place an aperture in front of the lens to limit the angle between the rays and the surface, or you split the power of the lens by using two lenses instead of one. Each lens will either refract the ray by a smaller amount leading to reduced spherical aberration. You can also play with the geometry of the lens. You have plano convex lens, plano convex flip the other way around, b convex lens, so called best form lens, and positive meniscus lens. And all of these are also available for negative lens power as well. Remember that if you want to reduce spherical aberration, you have to play with the geometry of the system, such as to always have the smallest angle between your rays and the lens surface. Another type of aberration is common. Let's take our previous lens back. I will also put an aperture in front of the lens. We know what happens for on-axis rays, but let's see what happens for off-axis objects. Once again, we see that the rays entering the lens at the center does not focus at the same position as the lens entering at the edge. But this time, the effect is not along the optical axis, but on the lateral axis. This results in a blurring that is the shape of a comet, hence the name coma aberration. That was a beautiful story, but let's see how to reduce coma aberration. To illustrate this, I will take a one-to-one -one relay imaging system. Let's say we want this bunch of rays to pass on axis. There are several aperture positions that will do the job. We can place the aperture here, or here for instance. If you draw the off-axis rays for the first position, you will end up with a lot of coma. But if you take the second solution, you get no coma at all. This is a very nice property of symmetric system, and you should always remember that there is a place in your setup where the aperture will limit the coma to a minimum. Field curvature is another important source of aberration in optical system. I will illustrate that with this relatively nice setup that has little spherical and coma but plenty of field curvature. Check what happens when we go from on-axis rays to off-axis rays you'd see that the input plane focuses along a circle. But wait, our camera is not a circle but a plane. As a consequence, only the point in the center of the image will be sharp, and all the point close to the border of the sensor will be blurred. This is the effect of field curvature, and it happens when you do not balance positive and negative elements properly in your optical system. One way to correct field curvature is therefore to place a negative element in the optical path, such as to balance the effect of the positive element. However, you have to place the lens as close as possible to the image plane to reduce its effect on the power of the system. 
Here is an example with a negative lens placed close to the image plane. We see that the rays focus at a slightly longer distance because the negative lens has decreased the overall power of the system, making its focal length longer. But the nice effect of placing this lens is also that it reduces the effect of field curvature and hence makes the image sharper at the edge of the sensor. And we finally have the chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration means that our system properties will depend on the color used in the illumination. Let's add a wavelength bar to our chart. This is our previous system with our wavelength cursor set to deep red. But if we move the cursor to the blue, we see that the focus position gets closer to the lens. This focal shift can be relatively high with uncorrected system. The best off-the-shelf way to correct your system is by using an achromatic doublet or triplet element. You still have a focus shift with changing wavelength, but it's usually much smaller and barely noticeable. Take care, however, that the system will not be achromatic just because you use an achromatic doublet into it. For instance, the following system is not achromatic because we are not correcting the two singlet elements at the center. So, that's your final design for the microscope objective. It has an aperture optimized for coma, two singlet lets to reduce spherical aberration, and a negative doublet to flatten the field curvature. If we summarize its properties as a microscope objective, we would say that it is a 5 time magnification because it has an equivalent focal length of 35mm, it has a numerical aperture of 0.07, this expresses the light cone angle accepted by the objective, which is about 8 degrees in this case. It is an infinity corrected objective because we have optimized all the aberration by using an input collimate beam. It is a plan objective because it has a limited field curvature. Moreover, we may say that it has a field number of 22 because that is the sensor size covered in the standard microscopy setup so that the objective still has high performance. In this case, that means we can study objects that are about 5 mm diameter maximum. But it is, however, not achromatic, because it was not corrected for color aberration. Okay, now that we understand how our microscopy objective is working, let's assemble it and test its properties. You will need the following items. The lens are available at Tor Labs, but we will have to make the spacer and aperture ourselves. Don't worry, I have put the 3D models on the website. First, take the negative doublet and hold it between your thumb and your index with the most curved surface on top. Add on top of that the 14.7mm spacer and add one of the plano convex lens with the convex side on top. Place the 1.1mm spacer and add the second lens. Convex side should be facing up as well. Insert all these elements into the threaded SM05 tube using some gentle force. Add the 37.8mm spacer and the aperture on top of that from the other side of the tube. Now secure the lens using a retainer ring. Shake a bit the tube so that all the lens fall into the correct position. Normally, the lens should center themselves on the spacer. If you get odd results, just untighten the retainer ring and shake one more time. Secure with the retainer ring and tighten the system firmly. Concerning the spacer, you can download them on our website as 3D models or machine them yourself from engineering plastics such as POM. If you choose to print them, I would recommend that you paint them using a deep black paint that's also matte. There are two reasons for that. Either you use a filament printing method and you ended up with a part that's very shiny which could cause severe strelite issue on the system, or you have uh, used laser sintering technique which produces a surface with some grain. Grain is good in terms of stray light because there is no preferred specular direction, but it also tends to make a lot of dust particles that can also ruin your setup. 
In both cases, covering the model with a thick black paint layer can help a lot. However, a much better solution is to machine the part yourself using a lathe. It may seem complex, but working on plastic such as POM is really easy. Just make sure that you take small paths until you reach the correct outer diameter, and then make the center bore using a drill first and finishing the job with a sharp boring tool. You may then cut the part off at the good dimension. If you cannot machine very long spacer, you can do like me and cut the longer spacer in several parts. Once you have the part, just clean the edge off using a sharp blade and polish them using sandpaper until they are perfect. Be careful however not to chamfer too much edge because we want it to press cray on the lens surface to force the lens to center itself on the spacer to have all the lens in line. Lens that are not correctly centered will decrease the optical system performance. Let's now discuss the test setup. It is not mandatory that you repeat the setup yourself because I made it essentially to compare the actual objective made with the software simulation to test that it was working as expected and that it was not too sensitive to mistake in alignments. If you reproduce the objective yourself, you should just get the same results. There are quite some tuning on the setup. The microscope objective is placed on the XY translation stage that allows to scan the object laterally to test the complete field of view. However, by doing that the object will be imaged outside of the camera sensor because the sensor is tiny and with a 5 time magnification. To compensate for this, I have placed a mirror that tilts the rays back at the center of the sensor. The sample under analysis is placed on the translation stage to get it in focus. Precise focus is essential if you want to achieve good performance in microscopy setup. Finally, I have used a 200mm telephoto objective from Nikon as a tube lens. Before we test the microscope objective, I would like to show you what you would obtain with a conventional panoconvex lens. You see that the image has some kind of blur at the center, which is typical of spherical aberration. But you also have blur on the outside of the image, which is due to both comma and field curvature. The point is, do not expect to have good image with only one lens. To get better image, you can switch to an achromatic doublet, even in monochromatic light. This is because the power is spread over two lens, which help reducing the spherical aberration. There is still, however, some comma at the edge of the field, but it's already getting much better. And finally, this is what we get with our custom objective. The image is of extremely good quality at the center, but also on the edge of the image and details down to 3 micrometer can still be recognized easily at up to 2.5 mm of center. This is a really good performance considering that we build this objective from stock elements. So, do you better understand what optical design is all about, what are the defined kind of aberration, and it's some experimental work by assembling your own diffraction limited flat field microscopy objective. I hope you enjoyed this video, please visit our website for more engineering projects and for a more detailed description of this objective and for the 3D model of the spacer. Do not hesitate to share this video with your friends to help me get known and propose more projects that you would like to hear about.